everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar today. I'm Chloe Gordon, uh, the head of scanner training here at Evident. And uh, today we're continuing on with our 3D printing webinar series. And today we're going to be talking about uh, how to get started with 3D printing with the DMG uh, 3D Max printer. And uh, to help us navigate the busy world of uh, 3D printing today, I have Steve Richards from uh, DMG with us today. Uh, so welcome, Steve. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Chloe. Yeah. And so uh, before we jump in, I'd love to hear you know a little bit about your background and your and the expertise that you're bringing to the table. Sure. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. And good afternoon, everyone. So my name, again, is Steve Richard. I'm with DMG. I have been with DMG for almost 15 years. Um, I've spent most of that time on the analog side of our business, uh, supporting um, clinical dentists in the field on a day-to-day -day basis um, with everything from Crown and Bridge to our newest product, resin infiltration um, and uh, hygiene. For those of you who are not real familiar with us, DMG America is the uh, American division for DMG Hamburg out of Hamburg, Germany. They're a 55-year-old dental materials company. Um, and we manufacture a number of products that uh, most of you probably are familiar with. Um, our, our number one product is Lux Attempt for temporary crown and bridge, um, Luxacore, uh, and again, our, one of our newer products that's very popular right now called Icon. It's a resin infiltration product. Um, that is it. Now I'm moving awesome. into the, the whole digital world. So exciting times, and yeah. um, we're really excited to learn more about you know the DMD printer digital workflow. So this is perfect time to have you on. Awesome. So the I guess the vibe I'm feeling in the in the market, or I guess in the industry right now, is that if you're not going digital, your competition is. So this is you know, the perfect time to have you on so we can uh, walk, walk through that digital workflow. So it can be overwhelming uh, you know, to jump into digital with what printer, with scanner, you know, there's so many decisions that you have to make. So at Evident, you know, we like to chunk it down into kind of three easy steps, right? You wanna scan and you're gonna design and you're gonna print. So today, that's what we're going to walk through. Steve and DMG are are those three components. So before we kind of jump into all of it, let's let's do a poll. Let's do our first poll. Um, and so we want to know like who's out here, who's listening. And so the questions are: Are you are you three D printing? And do you have a scanner? So we'll take the first you know fifteen seconds here, and let's uh, let's let people vote. All right, five seconds. Oh, there we go. Done. Perfect. Interesting. What do we have here? Right. So a lot of people are looking to get into three D printing. That's really exciting. So, Steve, when we started chatting, chatting about the printer, the question that came to my mind and a question that was submitted by a doctor is, you know, DMG is an established, you know, well-respected, like you said, materials company. Um, what made you want to get into three D printing? Well, Chloe, I think for us, it's a natural transition, right? The industry is evolving uh, from an analog world to a digital world, mm -hmm. and we're a materials manufacturer. Um, what do you need in a 3D printer? You need printing resins and materials, correct? So really, correct. the transition for us is to move from putting a cartridge in a gun, pumping it into a, a putty matrix, and making a crown or whatever it may be, right? Yep. And now we scan it and we print it. The same thing at the end of the day. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. And so that that's such a natural, natural transition. So, so materials then. So talk to me about resins. Like what what cool things uh, are we going to be seeing? Sure. So, you know, and and I made myself a couple of quick notes here because when it comes to the resins, I want to make sure I share what's clear. So DMG really, as we've moved into the to this this period of time, there's a there's a time frame, right? You've got to get things FDA approved and get them onto the market. So we've got a number of products that are already available mm -hmm. and we've got several in the pipeline. So we, we currently, we have model resins. Mm -hmm. um, we've got custom tray materials. We've got hard, soft, or flex, what we call flexible 
uh, mm -hmm. splint materials that can be used for things like surgical guides and sports guards or whitening trays, um, direct indirect bonding trays, um, and then obviously things like night guards and, mm -hmm. and other appliances that we need. Um, we have soft gingival material, we've got casting materials for laboratories, but what's coming down the pike obviously soon are things like denture base, new, new denture base materials, um, and the ability to print uh, long-term crowns. In, rather than that's, that's some pretty exciting stuff coming. Um, you know, I know that a lot of companies are working on with uh, when it comes to comes to crowns. So is that, um, that's probably a big priority for you guys. We really see it as, I mean, DMG is a crown and bridge company. We had, that's what we were founded on. Um, so we were in the temporary crown and bridge space and all the supporting products that go hand in hand with that. And um, as we move from an analog work, workflow to a digital workflow, um, it only makes sense to offer that. Yeah, no, 100%. For sure. And so tell, tell us a little bit about the, the 3D Max. So the 3D Max is really, it's a great printer. Um, and I'm not saying that because it's ours. Uh, I mean, when we- no, when You're not biased size, at all, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's easy, right? Yeah. But when we size up our printer against the competition, this is a printer that um, it's a high precision machine. Mm -hmm. So when a doctor buys one of these for his in-office lab, what he's really getting, is he's getting lab quality equipment in a relatively small footprint. Mm -hmm. This is a real benefit to the doctor because it doesn't take up a lot of space. Most importantly, and I would say first and foremost, it's an FDA approved system. Mm -hmm. It's fully validated. So we have smart, <clears throat> smart connectivity that allows all the components in our system to talk to one another. From the design software to the, um, depending on what design software we're using, to the nesting software, to the printer, to the wash bay and to the curing box. They're all interconnected with Bluetooth technology or a LAN connection, um, which is really a benefit to, to the system because what's really cool about it is that you design it, you nest it, send it to the print, right? As you said, it's really pretty simple. We yeah. scan, we design, we print. Yeah. But post-processing is very important. And we've got a great system because we use RFID technology on our system. And so we're not the only ones to use RFID technology, but the way we use it, I think, is different than everyone else. Because not only when we scan the bottle, does it timestamp, date stamp, knows what lot number, knows exactly what material is going into the machine. It pairs the resin tray with the material that was scanned in the bottle on the outside, so we know exactly what's in there. So first off, from a safety security standpoint, make sure you're not printing with the wrong materials. Knows well, that's smart. <laughs> non-biocompatible. Um, also for a busy dental office, the great thing is a lot of folks are using some manual processes in the post-processing system. Mm -hmm. Ours is fully automated. So when you're done printing and you go to, to the wash box, for instance, our, you drop your materials in the wash box, you turn it on, mm -hmm. and then you go to an operatory to see a patient and you get busy and you forget about it. Well, our system doesn't just leave your materials sitting in a wash of alcohol for hours while you've gotten sidetracked, uh, you know, which is easy to do in a busy dental office. Our material, it pumps it in. We have two bottle system. It's a very unique little, cool little system. And you'll see, a, uh, everyone will get to see how it works here in just a minute. But it basically pumps the alcohol in in a first wash, mm -hmm. pumps it back out, pumps in a second wash, washes it again, and then it shuts down when it's done. It knows exactly what material was put in there because when we, when we designed the material or when we put it into the printer in the beginning, and then we moved it over. Everything is paired equally across. So it knows we're doing a, a uh, we're doing a model and we, it knows model material was printed. It knows model material needs to be washed and it also knows model material needs to be cured. So it knows how long to wash it, how long to cure it. Um, and it could sit there as long as it needs to until you, until you get back there and you can move it from the wash bay to the cure box. Um, and I think really the important part of that, you know, is the fact that you have that electronic record, you know, when it was done, who did it, the whole nine yards from start to finish. Yeah, that, that audit trail, that audit trail is so important. Correct. Yeah. And uh, it's funny you kind of bring that up. We had an issue here in our lab uh, yesterday, you know, we're always kind of tinkering in our R&D lab with the different printers and we discovered a night guard that's been sitting in the wash for like 
I don't know, like two weeks. So, you know, I kind of <laughs> threw the whole system off and we had to do a deep clean, but we're like, there's that in my car. We're wondering where that went. So to be able to kind of automate that, that's, that's really powerful. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that, that's really good. And so with um, the 3D maps, is that, is it a closed system? So our system currently is, is validated to all of our materials on that perspective. Um, and there are discussions around where that's going to go next. Um, but obviously in the beginning, we wanna be able to control the process, um, make sure that you have a fully validated system and paired with our system. On, it is open in respect to the fact that though it will receive a, a, a scan or a file from just about any system on the market. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter really what scanner you use, as long as it can be converted to an STL file, it can be sent to our, our nesting software. Nice. And looks like we have, we have a question here. Um, sure. So it just says, so the workflow is simplified with your printer. So you're, you're saying it's very easy workflow, which I guess they'll show us soon, correct? Correct. Nice, nice. And um, can be able to kind of connect the dots there. You know, what we, we find when we're talking to doctors, um, when they're looking to set up their digital workload, the question we always ask is, and this is what we were talking about before, was, you know, are you delegating this, this process, right? Is your assistant going to do it? Because great question. You know, if they are, there's, you know, you have to train them. What if they leave and you have to jump in yourself as a doctor? So having this simplified workflow that's, that's intuitive is, is really powerful. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I think that that brings to to light another point that I, yeah. I would like to make quickly, and that Absolutely. is that DMG is a dental company. We're not a dental dental printer company. We're not a printer company. We're not a printer manufacturer. That wasn't our focus when we moved into this. We're a dental company mm -hmm. that got into three D printing because it fits, mm -hmm. which means we're going to be. We understand. The workflow that you currently have, we understand where 3D printing fits into that workflow, mm -hmm. and we're there to support you from start to finish. And I think that's the one thing that we've heard in the industry overwhelmingly is that support is is not great because a lot of these companies they're manufacturing printers for all kinds of industries, not just dental. And we are strictly in the dental space. The, the products that we make are going to be focused on dentistry, and the support will be there. You know. We're, what we'd like to say is we'll hold your hand until you don't want us to hold your hand anymore. You know, we'll be there with you uh, to walk that walk and train you and educate you and support you. And then we'll be there after the sale if you need us to. Yeah, and it, it's, you're, you're hundred percent, right? It's, it's that support and training that is, that makes the difference. You know, I don't know how many times we, I've spoken to doctors who, you know, have a scanner or a printer just sitting in the corner, not being used because they didn't have that after sale care that you need to actually figure out how to put that digital workflow together. So, right. um, you know, you're looking for people that you know, live and breathe digital every day and not just, you know, talk about it. Right. So would you recommend the, the 3D Max for like first time users or is it more, you know, of an advanced printer? I would recommend it right off the bat. You know, if you think about it, when you send a, let's, let's assume that you've already scanning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you've gone digital, but you're not printing in your office. When you send it to your laboratory currently, you expect the best product back that you can get from your lab. Right. And why wouldn't you expect the same thing in-house, right? Yeah. We've got a high precision machine here that's gonna produce lab quality materials. It's very fast, it's very intuitive. And the nice thing about the machine is that it gives you that high quality precision now, but it, because of the way this machine operates and because of the fact that it can print to a very low micron level, um, materials are gonna catch up with the technology at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this machine is, is gonna carry you into the future, the next three, four, five, maybe longer years. Um, so you're not looking to upgrade as you get down the road. Um, a perfect example is I was at a meeting and spoke with someone recently and they said a new, new material came out. The wash box that was sold to them did not have a nitrogen um, input on it. And the new material they wanted to use required a nitrogen cure. So they had to go out one year into it and buy a new box. Yeah. Um, 
our our system is set up to take you into that future and has all the things those things already built into it. So I think it's uh, you know you start with the right good. If if good enough is not good enough for your lab, it shouldn't be good enough for you, right? You should, you should buy what's right. It's future proof. I, I like it, and you know, right. like you said, you're coming from that materials background. You kind of understand you know, what needs to be done, I guess, to to be future proof. Right. Um, a couple more questions. So, how how long does it take to print a model? You said it was fast. Like, how how fast is it? It is. So it's a DLP DLP printer, and and we can print a um, let's let's say a model or a, a splint or a surgical guide on the horizontal mm -hmm. like 15 minutes 15 wow. to 16 minutes it's very quick that, that is that's, that's very very quick so well, that's amazing and then the other question is and we, we kind of touched on this but why why should i buy a dmg printer over um over the competition what's what's your what's your elevator pitch to us well, I, I think it depends on what's important, right? But I think really it comes down to accuracy. It comes down to uh, speed in the machine. Um, and it really starts with what, what, what do they want to do in their office, right? What do we want to print? If you want to do same day dentistry, you can't have a machine that takes three hours to print something. Um, you know, not unless you're going to send all your patients to lunch and ask them to come back in the afternoon. <laughs> I mean, it just, it doesn't work. That a way. long appointment. Patients would love that. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, in this, in the same sense that we got into as, as doctors started to mill in their office uh, and mill crowns, um, this allows them to do the same thing. You know, if you've got the right piece of equipment, you can print it fairly quick um, and deliver it while the patient's there. Make sure it fits properly. Make sure there are no issues. Um, and I think that's really what it boils down to. Yeah, absolutely. That, that makes complete sense. And so I'm just looking at the time. And I want to make sure that we are able to walk through the, the workflow. So let's go back to what we were talking about earlier with the, you know, the scan, design, and print. And so you know, step one, scanning. So you know, I probably a lot of you know what evidence, you know, we're one of the world's largest CAD design centers, but we also are a medit reseller. So uh, for scanning, we always recommend going with the medit because of its, you know, its accuracy, its speed, that open architecture, and just a, fa a fair price point. And also uh, with anything when you work with evidence, you have a team of experts that, what we were talking about earlier, right? Like live and breathe digital, digital workflow. You know, they don't just talk about it every day. They're actually in there tinkering, solving problems, like working with printers, working with scanners. So um, it's really important that the first step of scanning, you have, have a team that can, uh, that can support you. So uh, let's bring up the scanning video and let's, let's start this digital workflow. So you can see here that um, we're gonna start with uh, scanning for a night guard. And here's where we're using the, reading the medit. And so you can see that it's a pretty fast scanner here. And at this stage, this is important that you have the right training to make sure that you're scanning properly. And you know what data points you need to capture to set yourself up and your team up for success. And so, like I said, at Evident, we have a team of CAD designers, with dentists, uh, dental tech, from staff to work through any issues that you have. So you can order your night guard directly through MeditLink and it'll go directly to a design center. So you'll see the design center can uh, design your night guard. And then once uh, the design's complete, it can go back to the evident hub. And this is where you can go in. And this is where you're gonna see that you have uh, your finished design file ready to be downloaded and uh, you know, ready to go to that next step, whatever it may be. So this is Steve. I'm going to pass over you team, uh, pass over to your team to be able to walk through the rest of that workflow. So, you know, to recap, we we scanned, we right. designed, and now let's jump into that last step of you have your um, design night guard. What are we going to do next? So I'm going to turn it over to Seth and Kyle at our office in New Jersey, and Kyle's going to show you the uh, the nesting software. Um, that prepares it, slices it, gets ready for the print. And then Kyle, uh, Seth is going to walk you through just a uh, quick overview of the equipment so they can actually see it. 
Perfect. All right, Kyle. Hi. Awesome. Uh, like I said, I'm Kyle from DMG America. I'm a digital specialist here. So I'm going to share my screen and show you NetFab, which is our nesting software. All right. So yeah, so this is our virtual build plate. And we're going to have to bring our parts into here and turn them into something that our printer can understand and actually print. So the first step of the workflow is to add our model that you have downloaded from the Evident Design Center. Um, you could, Evident will be able to design and nest these yourself, themselves and then send them to the printer if you don't want to do the nesting yourself, but nesting is pretty quick and easy on our system. So here I have a simple uh, splint. I'm going to arrange it like so, so that these supports are on the outside, not on the uh, occlusal surface. A very common mistake, surprisingly, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the orientation cha changes the print time. So if I, if I printed it vertically like this, that's a taller part, and that's going to take a lot longer. So just in the interest of a quicker print, I'm going to angle it at about 15 degrees, like so. What's the and, difference in printing time? Do you know off the top of your head if you did yeah. it vertically versus horizontally? So if I did something totally flat like this, that's going to take about 15 minutes. Whereas if I did something totally vertical like this, it'll take about an hour. And now is there a different in, difference in like the accuracy or anything with the quality of the print or just strictly? It's time? really just the locations of the supports that are going to matter. Mm -hmm. So this will keep this, you know, you always have the supports underneath the model, which I'll show you support generation in a second. But if we printed it vertically, it would take a lot longer, but we're going to have less supports along this bottom surface. So here's roughly how I would orient the part for a relatively quick print. Then working down this left side, I'm going to click add supports. There's a couple different profiles you can use for our different materials, but I'm just going to make a select for a splint because that's what we're doing. And that is generating. There we go. So all these little supports have generated. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to create a base plate, which just um, makes a little raft that unites all the supports for easier removal. For those out there who might ask the question, you know, if they're new to printing, they might say, why would you print vertically versus horizontal? And, and really the answer to that is pretty simple. If you want to print multiple items on the build plate, you can print more items if they're vertical than you can if they're horizontal. So it just gives you more space to print. Yeah. Yeah, and I know you guys are able to show an example of that, of, of that as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to go into all the cool things you can do, but I'm just trying to give the, the quick overview. But yeah. now we've got our supported model, our base plate, and all that's left to do is select our material, which in this case is going to be our ortho resin, and create build. Now it's going to tell us roughly how much material and the time that the print is going to use. And now it's slicing, which is a term you may have heard many times. This is where the computer takes the model and turns it into all those individual layers mm -hmm. that the printer uses to physically make the part. So it's turning it from a digital 3D object into something that the printer can understand and create. Mm -hmm. so that's slicing. And here we have all those individual slices. As you can see, I step through them. This is... Oh, that's cool. Yeah, each one of these is a picture, basically, that the printer is going to use to build our model. And then I'm going to send to printer and the other, or you could download to a flash drive and plug it in. And that's all for nesting. Easy, easy. And, and like, and like Kyle said, that's also a service that the Evident Design Center can do as well. If you're wanting like a complete kind of hands-off process, once you send your scan off, uh, the team can you know, design the night guard and make it print ready so that file that you get back from uh, from the design center just needs to be loaded into the printer and, uh, and press print. Yep. And now we can send it to Seth in the lab to show us the system. Cool. Thanks, Kyle. OK. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Kyle, for, uh, for the introduction. Uh, so my name is Seth Stoffler. I'm also a uh, digital specialist here. And to the side of me is our 
pretty much our 3D printing system. So right next to me is the 3D Max printer. This is our high speed, high quality uh, printer. And this is pretty much the first step when it comes to 3D printing your, your, the items that you wanna create. So after printing, we have on our side is the 3D wash and 3D cure. And one thing I wanna start off by pointing out is just to show how compact this uh, system is. A lot of other printers on the market, they either require their own rolling station or their own completely separate room from anything just because of how large they are. Here we have everything that we need right here on uh, this countertop. We have our printer, the washer and cure, as you can see, are actually stackable. So if you want to keep them together, you could absolutely do that. And they all work together as they all have the smart connectivity. And it's all very uh, user friendly and very easy to work with. Okay. So when it comes to working with the 3D Max printer, we're going to start off by just showing what's going on inside. So like Kyle said, from NetFab, you can send it directly to the printer itself. Or if we want to, we have a USB plug right here on the side. I can load up my USB, plug it in, and have all my files loaded in. You can actually have multiple files loaded in at once. There's nothing stopping you from putting multiple files at the same time and having a whole lineup of things that you want to work with. So inside the printer is our bill plate and our resin reservoir. So for the instance of saving time, we already have a splint that was already created. So loading in and loading out the bill plate and the reservoir is actually very easy. I would say everything in this machine is very easy. It's almost like a plug and play type of uh, machine to work with. So when it comes to taking out the bill plate, we simply screw off the top and here is our bill plate. So as we can Come see up here, close. let's see that. There you go. Yeah. So you see here we have our one splint. Now, just because we have one splint on here, that doesn't mean you have to print one piece at a time. One of the nice things with this build plate is you could actually, you know, you could really put it to levels that a lot of users think that, oh, you can only print one at a time, but it's up to the user if they want to really push it. So and we have some other examples here where right here is just three flat splints. So if you want to print three at a time or one at a time, it's all up to you. Along with that, we also have uh, a stack of five trays. Now, so bring it closer. Bring five. closer. There you go. Nice. Yep. And another thing is models. I know models are really big with 3D printing. Over here, we have a successful stack of 10 by 10. So this is 20 models being printed at the same time. You know, that's a good point right there, Seth, too. And Chloe, for the doctor who says, I'd like to get into 3D printing because I'd like to maybe do my own in-house aligner program. Yeah. Here's a great example. And you can run those overnight like that, too. So you can, you can load it up, hit print go home and it'll be sitting there waiting for you when you get in in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So when it comes to working with the machine, so we have our print job, it's all finished. The nice thing with the printer is not only do you get the full system, but it also comes with the nesting software and it comes with a lot of accessories that are going to be very beneficial to uh, your 3D printing experience. So one of the things that, um, that you'll pretty much be using all the time is the metal scraper. This is used to take off prints from the bill plate. And as you see, with the custom supports and the custom base plate that we added within NetFab, it makes taking pieces off of our build plate actually very easy. I simply slide under uh, our piece and then I just bring it off. So only took me what, like two seconds. So after we have our piece um, off, it's now time to work with our three to wash. So our three to wash actually slides right open. We place our piece inside and now, it's actually really easy. On the side of our tank is uh, two bottles of isopropanol. This is what we're gonna use to wash our uh, print job. And the nice thing is with our three to wash and three to cure, it comes preset with options for each of our resins. So right now we're working with our ortho resin to create um, our print job. I simply just find our ortho um, option. I click, uh, I click on the option and then I click go. And as we said before, it pretty much runs the whole thing all on its own. You'll see a bar up here to show the progress within the wash job. Mm -hmm. And then it'll show in the end that, okay, your piece is all dry. It's ready to go and it's on to the next step. So after washing our piece, then we work with our 3D Cure. So our 3D Cure is the curing device. After you print out a piece and you wash it, you need to cure your resin. Uh, so after washing the piece, we will take our piece out, then for the sake of time, I have a, another piece that has just been washed. We just um, uh, open up the machine, we place it inside, and just like the three to wash, we find our option and we click on our, our resin and we click go. 
and it will show the uh, it will show the whole progress um, as it goes on. It will let you know when it's all finished. You could wash multiple parts at the same time and cure multiple parts at the same time. And that's kind of another thing that's really nice with this because it's all together. It's all very, everyone kind of runs with its own thing. It really stops a lot of bottlenecks within the production system where you could have something being printed. Next thing you know, you have your other print job being washed. And then that print job before there, you have it being cured. You have that whole system running all at the same time. And from personal experience with working this machine so much, we can really describe this one as a workhorse where it's just nonstop printing, nonstop washing, nonstop curing. It keeps on giving you successful uh, print jobs and it just, you know, it, it just keeps on going. It's a really nice system for that. Excellent. Uh, Chloe, another, that uh, yeah, I just want to- uh, Pardon me? Oh, yeah, yeah, I go was ahead, gonna go say, ahead. Seth, you might talk to the, uh, to the time on the uh, cure box as well, because some of these machines that cure items, they they may take a couple of hours to cure where this takes, you know, minutes, not hours. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. And again, yeah, it's, it's a very fast system and it's also, it takes a lot of the guessing work out of it. A lot of you, new users might be a little turned off from, you know, trying to figure out what is the perfect wash time? What's the perfect cure time? What if their print, you know, what if they have a successful print, but then they cure it wrong and now it's completely failed. You're going to have to reprint everything. That's the whole nice thing with the system, with having these preset options for each of the users. These are specifically made for each resin, and that stops a lot of the, well, it gets a lot of the weight off the back of the user. There's no, there's no guessing with it. It's all set for you. That, so, well, another, that, um, yeah. We have a question that uh, came in, and I, this might be a perfect time to chat about it. And I am cognizant of time, so we are over, but let's go for another few minutes. But... Um, it's, can I input custom, custom resin settings in your slicer in order to use other brand resins? And I, can I use other slicers with your printer? Kyle, would you like to answer that this? That might be a Kyle question. Yep. Um, you can. We don't have, like, with our system, you can't, like, select a third-party resin, mm -hmm. but you can change the settings to maybe put in the right light intensity and time. So you might have to um, figure it out yourself basically, but it could work. It could work, yeah. In theory, it can work. Yeah, if there's a material that you really like and you really want to print, um, you'd be able to figure out a setting and get that to work. Okay, okay. And then um, what is the resolution on the LCD screen? Is it monochromatic? Yes, it's monochromatic and it's, uh, 1080p. Nice. Nice. Uh, sorry, Seth, I interrupted you. Just going with um, that first question, another thing with the full system itself, you have the ability to also add third party options um, for the uh, for the wash and cure, where you could try, you can make your own presets. It's up to the user to try to find these presets um, for the information, but you are allowed to add, to add other other options to the three to wash and three to cure. Got it, got it, okay. So another thing I just want to uh, chat about real quick is with the three to max, it uses RFID technology. So like Steve said before, when it comes to uh, using the RFID and using the reservoirs, each of our bottles of resin come with a RFID tag. So if we have a brand new resin tray, we could fill it up with this ortho resin. We mm -hmm. slide the tank into place and then I use the RFID tag on the bottle to scan it on the one that's on the printer right here. And we'll get a message asking, do we want to save this resin to this resin tray? So let's say if you're a busy lab that has multiple different resins being used, this allows you to not um, accidentally mix up resins or switch out resins that you don't want to switch out. It, can, it kind of helps with keeping everything all organized. And in case anything does go wrong, everything will be logged and, you know, you could see, okay, this is where we messed up. And it, you know, it just keeps, it, it's kind of like a little safety feature to let you know. Yeah, that's, that's great. Cause when you're busy, sometimes you don't pay attention to those details. Um, so, thank, thanks, Seth. Chloe, sure. there's one other point on what Seth is talking about now that's really important too for doctors to think about as they purchase a machine. What are the associated costs that go with that machine on operating it on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And resin And also how much, how much is a machine? That was a question that um, someone asked as well. Sure. So uh, I'll, I'll finish the piece on the associated costs. So a lot of these machines you have to buy, those resin trays are disposable. Mm -hmm. You get a certain number of prints out of them and then you got to buy another one and they run anywhere from, I've heard on the low end, you know, 85 to a hundred bucks a pop mm -hmm. all the way up to 
uh, $500 for some of them, depending on the equipment. Mm -hmm. Our, you can really do indefinite prints out of ours. If you were to buy four resin trays, store them in the resin tray box, which you can leave your resins in, which means you don't have to clean them out on a regular basis. You just continue to add resin to them and occasionally um, uh, check them for any, any debris that might be in them. Um, you can use them over and over and over again for a long time. You know, on the, uh, the answer to the cost uh, associated with the machine. So our entire, our machine runs about $17,000. But I think if you really think about it, you really need to think about it in an ROI perspective. How fast can I pay for this machine? Yeah. Um, and doing five in-office splints a week, uh, let's say night guards, you could pay for this machine in a year with no problem. Um, and you're gonna have a machine that's gonna last a long time. You're not gonna be looking two years, two and a half years down the road for another machine. So your ROI on the machine is really pretty good. Excellent. Yeah. And that's, that's a big question too, right? It is always about that ROI. And so, uh, you know, this is a time that I want to quickly throw up another poll here before we wrap up and is, you know, what's stopping you from investing in 3D printing? For those that had said no in our first poll about 3D printing, um, with all these cool things that are happening, showing, you know, you can see the ROI of how you can make that money back. Uh, what's, what's stopping you? So let's pull up that uh, second poll. And uh, we'll let the, um, uh, let some people vote on there. Um, so we'll we'll bring that up quickly. And while that uh, comes up, and maybe it's not going to come up. So if you uh, are interested in three D printing but don't know what, you know why you haven't really gotten started, put it in the chat. Let us know what's holding you back because. Uh, you know, maybe this is something that we can work with you on to help you um, figure out, you know, what's that first step to get into 3D printing. So I want to thank everyone. We're seven minutes over and I see like we have a good solid group of people here that are still watching. And so, you know, you can see that it's pretty simple when you really chunk it down to that scan, the design and print. And with Evident as, uh, you know, one of the world's largest CAD design centers that, you know, works within that digital workflow and DMG, that's this traditional, you know, company that understands material, understands the dental industry, um, and it was a natural transition for them to move into 3D printing. The scan design print workflow is, um, make, it makes total sense and it's completely seamless. And so, uh, you know, if you have any questions about uh, scanning, about the Medit scanner uh, designs or printing, uh, you know, drop us a line, put your email in the chat, and uh, we can reach out and answer any questions that you may have. So Steve, thank you so much for joining us today, and Kyle and Seth, uh, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Chloe, thank you for having us. And, and we'd just like to, to part ways by saying if there are any questions, if a doctor would like to dig into this deeper, would like to talk to us about our system, our materials, um, my email is srichard at dmg-america.com. Um, or they can go to our website and, and request uh, information and we're happy to reach out and, and have a just have a conversation, see where it fits. Perfect. And same here, if um, we can just contact Evan and we can pass over the information over to Steve and his team as well. Absolutely. So thanks everyone. Have a great, have a great day and uh, we'll see you next week. See you thanks later. Bye guys. Bye.